Hey guys, Monk here. I'm going to show you how to stream, and specifically I'm going to show you how to stream with this Avermedia Aver TV USB HD DVR. Okay, so it came in this box. I'm going to show you some of the pieces that it came with. Uh oh, camera's running low on battery. Hopefully it lasts. Um, show you some of the pieces that it came with and how you hook them all up together to get your stream running. So, over here I have my Avermedia USB HB HD DVR. Um, and on the back you can see basically where everything plugs in. Um, I'm going to show you the front really quick. These are some alternate inputs. You have your component or your uh, composite inputs right here, your red, yellow, and white ones, old school, and S-Video. Um, those are some alternate inputs, The one, but instead of those, the ones that I'm using are the ones from the back. Uh, the uh, component, with it, which is the red, green, and blue plugs for video, and the red and white plugs for audio. Um, so they, these come in from my Xbox. So I have my uh, component plugged into my Xbox here. I uh, also have the optical here, but this is a different story. Component plugged into my Xbox, running to the Evermedia, and these are on, plugged in on the bottom layer. Because the bottom layer is input, and then the top layer is output. And then on the top layer, you can see I have these three plugged in. Um, and this is a cord that came with the Avermedia. It's your component out, your component video out, to, and that runs into the back of my TV. Now, this can be a problem if you have a monitor, because some monitors will not have component input. So, there's a couple different ways you can handle this. Uh, one of them, the one that uh, I've heard bandied about, is to buy the Atlona VGA Scaler. Here it is, the Atlona VGA Scaler. On the right side of the bottom picture, you'll have something plugged in from your Xbox. You'll have your VGA cable running from your Xbox to the right right hand port on the bottom picture. Coming out from the left hand port in the bottom picture, you'll have a VGA cable running from the Atlona to your monitor. Now on to the next picture. In this picture, the top left-hand image is the same thing as the top left on your other picture. The bottom three pictures are your cables that come with the Atlona. The left-hand one is the VGA cable that runs from the At Atlona's output, the left-hand one I was talking about before, um, the Atlona's output to your monitor. It's just pure VGA. The middle picture is your VGA to component converter. I'm going to talk more about that in a second. Right-hand picture is a plug. Yay! Now, the, the, middle pl the middle cable, the one we want to talk about, plugs into this port you see on the top left-hand part of this image. Um, and it runs from your Atlanta VGA scaler out to your capture device, the input of your capture device. So, the essence of what the Atlona does is it splits your signal into two pieces, one that runs to your monitor and one that runs to your capture card. So it lets you play in VGA, lets you play on a monitor that might not have component input, and um, send the signal also to your capture card in component form. Because uh, most capture cards do not have any sort of VGA input whatsoever. Or as an alternative creative solution, you could just buy this $10 piece of equipment that will convert your component signal to a VGA signal to plug into your monitor. So you'll plug the output of your c capture card into the ends of this, and then plug this into your monitor. Now, I'm, the problem is I'm not 100% sure this works. I'm emailing the company right now, and I'll update this video with an annotation as soon as I find out. But if it does, then it'll save you about $300, which is like 50 Chipotle burritos, okay? So just save yourself the money if this works, and get this, and don't buy that $300 thing. Okay, so that should take care of most of our hardware issues. Um, there's two things left to cover though. One is webcam, which is really simple. USB connection to computer, put webcam up. Done. Duh. All right. Second part is getting your own voice audio, getting your own voice audio into the mix, because um, the the stream, the capture device will send your game audio, but that but your voice audio is not included in that. So the words that you are saying, the callouts that you are making to your teammates or any commentary you might be wanting to make while you're streaming. To do that, you have to feed something into your com your computer's mic input in one way or another. And the way that I chose to do this 
was by plugging a one eighth inch, one -eighth inch cable into my Mixamp's PC mic input, and I know you cannot read that, but um, it's the second from the left, and it's labeled on the Mixamp. So one eighth inch cable into your Mixamp's PC mic output, not input, output, and into your computer's microphone jack. This is my computer's quote unquote front mic jack, which is kind of a default thing. And that's as simple as it was. Um, I, at first when I tried to do it, I was trying to plug it into my daisy chain. But what that would do is pan it all the way to the left or the right, so my voice would only be in the left or the right headphone of whoever is listening. And I didn't like that. So plugging into the PC mic input instead fixed the problem. That's just about it. Uh, next we'll move on to the software aspects. <coughs> now that we've covered the hardware portion, let's look at the software portion of streaming. All right, so here we have XSplit. It's a free download for now. Uh, it keeps giving me this message saying that beta is almost over. Buy now to prevent save 70% or something. Anyways, I'm not too worried. I figure if um, if it runs out, then I can either buy it or find another program that'll do the same thing for free also. Anyways, so for now, using XSplit, let's look at what we have here. This window right here, this um, area that's black right here with this little message is your preview window for what your streamer or your audience will see, the people that are watching your stream. Or if you're making a local recording, this is what's being recorded. So to modify what's in here, go down. Uh, you have your scene selections here. So I have like webcam and screen, webcam only, screen only. Let's start a new one to show you guys how to do this. Scene 5. Scene sources. You have this in your lower left, it says scene sources. Add. Add camera. Your webcam. Boom. Now your webcam's added. You can click it around. It's pretty intuitive. Um, you can do some cropping by right clicking, position, and crop down here. Crop it in. Crop it in. Boom, boom. Okay, cool. And then add your screen region. Um, this point will show you the upper left hand point of your screen region. So start in the upper left. If you want to do your whole screen, just drag all the way and then release. Boom, you have your whole screen here. Now, put this up here, expand it, it's your whole screen. Oh, but my webcam's hidden. Well, no biggie. There it is, back again. Just drag it up in this little layering tool. Okay, and now let's look at our audio sources. So these are kind of video sources. Now let's look at audio sources. This is my computer's mic. See, it's a little mic on a stand. How clever. This is monitoring the level of the mic. Uh, and this one over here is monitoring the level of the speakers. My speakers aren't playing anything, but if I started playing music, then this orange bar would start going up too. Now you basically know what this whole interface is all about. You can rename your scenes. You can switch between scenes at the click of a button. So easy. So beautiful. Green only. Okay. Broadcast. Actually, it's, it's, all right. free up some processing power there. All right, broadcast. So I have it linked up to my Justin TV account. So when I f if I click this, it'll start my broadcast. I'm going to show you how to get this, how to link up your Twitch account or your Justin TV account. I'm going to go ahead and remove mine because this is how easy it is. Add Justin TV, same as Twitch TV. They're two parts of the same being, the same organism. All right, username. Monk, lols, password, stupid password 78, channel, monk lols. All right, now I got some tips um, to for console gaming. I've heard that it's good to bump the quality up to, I can't remember if it was 6 or 7. I think it was 7. I'm going to bump it up. 7, set the bit rate to 1500, set the buffer to 3000. That's what I heard. I don't know. Let's see if it works. I'll tell you later. Okay. Um, and there it is. It's set up. Apply. Settings. Successfully changed. Okay. Broadcast. Now, alternatively, you can use this XSplit to just make a local recording, which means you're not broadcasting it, but you're recording the stuff that's in here to um, a file, a movie that you can play back later. The problem with XSplit is that it records it in, like, .x or .um, .swf format or whatever it is, 
um, the Flash Player format um, instead of like .avi. You basically you can't um, upload the format that XSplit records in to YouTube. So you have to employ other programs like the handy dandy one I'm using called the AVS Video Editor. I tried to use Cam Studio, had a bunch of problems with it, so I just switched over. Anyways, getting off track. Back on track now. Tools, settings. Let's look at what we, what we can do in here. General. Um, you have your audio. This is kind of important. You have your audio. Here's where you select your audio store. So I have mine set to my front mic. But if I wanted to have my webcam be providing the audio, I could switch over and have it be microphone from the Dynex 1.3 webcam. Um, channels, um, resolutions. There's other videos that can tell you how to do how to like fool around with this. I'm not going to get into it. Save some time. I'll link you to videos. Um, and that's pretty much it for XSplit. So I'm going to minimize this and bring up Total Media Extreme 2. This is a program that came with my Avid Media uh, capture device. It came on a CD. I installed it. The portion of it that we're going to be concerned with is record video. Far left. Click. I'll close this while it's coming up. Boom. All right. So this, I'm turning my Xbox on. This is my Xbox screen. It doesn't exist right now because it's off, but it's about to exist. Oh, uh, there it is. Okay. So, what you're seeing is your Xbox screen. And what I'm hearing is my Xbox's audio. You're probably not hearing that right now, depending on my recording settings. I don't know. Um, my capture volume, this is um, necessary to pay attention to. The sweet spot seems to be 19. I've heard it from different, lots of different people. 19. Just do it. If not, tweak it. Whatever. All right. And then... Um, if you have your X split to set to record your full screen, then all you do is full screen this, and boom. Then your X split, your full screen X split, is now showing your Xbox. How convenient is that? It's super convenient. And that is pretty much as complicated as it gets, folks. Which isn't that complicated. Hopefully, just complicated enough to make you come watch this video. If I left anything uncovered, just let me know with a comment or a message, and I'll try and get back to you with an answer. Other than that, thanks for watching. Peace out.